How was the Easter break? Nice. Too short. Come on. We discussed this already. <laughs> but what would be an appropriate length for it? 52 weeks. 52 weeks. Okay. Maybe the entire curriculum. Yes? Just extend it every time that's. Uh -huh. So every time by just two more weeks or something. Yeah, like that. Uh -huh. yeah. well, uh, I, I don't know about about uh, Austria, but in Hungary people usually uh, go to their friends. You know, many people are coming over, and we are hanging out with other people. And you always have to drink their stuff. So you you, you go there, and 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 we have this drink that's called the palinka. It's something like the schnapps, but but way stronger and i told this to some some austrian people and they were like oh my god stronger than the schnapps <laughs> how can that be and it's very easily at least in hungary so that's how it works and you you go to the to the very first place and you have to drink from their homebrew awful palinka usually it's very awful and and you even have to say something good about it so you drink it and it's like oh it, but you have to say something good about this because they are they are looking at you. You know what what will be the reaction? So you say that it that's that's really strong, <laughs> <laughs> and then most people seem to be satisfied with that. So I, this is usually what I say. But then when when you are at like the fifth station for that day, and 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 some people just don't take no for an answer, unfortunately. So this this is how it goes. Is it is it any better in Austria? It's more family holiday. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the family part is actually the, the, the nice part. So we, we, we can decide if we drink our own stuff or not. Okay. Uh, I mean, my fiance's grandfather attempted to make some brew, some palinka at home, and well, he did something. So so I mean, <laughs> something was created in the process, but uh, after after tasting it. Even even the postman didn't want to drink it. <laughs> I don't know uh, about postmen in uh, Austria, but in in Hungary they are like really hardy people. So they they drink whatever they find. <laughs> because because obviously you don't you don't give the good stuff for the postman. You you give them the leftovers. So it's like no no one drank. Oh, it's like it will be good for the postman, and he's happy with that. Why Imagine are that. <laughs> Sorry. Why are you posting? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of unusual here. Yeah. 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 Well, they are. No, they are. They, they they seem to like alcohol, according to my experiences. So, yeah. And and even the postman didn't want to drink that anymore. So <laughs> he ne next time we have seen him around the house, and he he, he just came like in, in front of the main main door. And, and, and we, we waved to him and hey, come, we, we have some for you. And he was like, no, 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 I'm just going to put them in here in this <laughs> immediately. Okay, so regarding the assignments, uh, you guys and girls have done really well. So I'm very happy to see that. People realize that there's some exponentiality with respect to the depth of the simulation. So the more deep we go, then the more exponential things become. But this is after like, I mean, it's exponential all along, but you don't know this because it starts out slow. But after like 10 to 15 bounces, you, you, can, you can see a very uh, telling characteristic of this exponential distribution. And, and many of you have recognized correctly that this is because uh, refraction and reflection are sampled all the time. So whenever I have a bounce, I am going to uh, compute an intersection. And then there's going to be two rays, perhaps, that continue their way. Because one is going to be in the reflection direction, and one is with refraction. And this quickly gets out of hand, because for every ray you have two more. That's the definition of something that is exponential. So, well done. Uh, let's proceed a bit. I'm going to talk just a bit about some advanced, a bit more advanced BRDF models that are mostly used with ray tracing. So you remember this conversion BRDF that you see on the right, and this is the scalar product between L and N, so the light vector and the normal. And obviously you can scale this with KD, which is some kind of diffuse albedo. Now, if you put it next to a real image, 
of a diffuse material, obviously it is a question, you know, what do we call a diffuse material or, or where was this photographed, how exactly, but let, let's disregard this and let, let's accept that we, we have this difference between the two. And if you take a good look, then it becomes apparent that in grazing angles, the simulated diffuse material seems to be completely dark. And if you take a look at the formula up there, then this, this is self-explanatory because the normal and the light direction and the normal and the light direction can get perpendicular. And then you will you will see this darkness. So there are some advanced BRDF models that try to be a bit more realistic in this regard. Such example is the Oren Nayer model, which is much closer to what you would measure in real life. But Let's note that all of these simplified BRDF, model, BRDF models, these are all hacks. This is not what physical reality is. People write up the actual equations that relate to physical reality and try to simplify in a way that a simple ray tracer can capture. And we are going to talk about global effects and what a real diffuse material looks like in a few minutes. So, and this RNA model seems much better, and what's even more, it can take into consideration these microsophic imperfections in different materials. And you, you can get a roughness parameter that can model these imperfections. What about specular models? Well, the FONC model, this V dot R that we have talked about, is, is not the only way to do it. There is also the uh, fong blin model, which is a more advanced model and uses this H, this half vector between L and V, and it produces different results. I think this, this image is maybe not the best because yes, the highlights are, are different, but one of the main advantage, advantages of this material model is that the shape of the specular reflections can get a bit more elliptic depending on the viewing direction and the surroundings. So here you have the very same circular thing. So it's, it's not the best example, but you can see that it's different. It looks more realistic. And we still have to think about the fact that these are still really good models, but, but these are still hacks. Uh, there's also the Cook-Torrens model. That's basically Fong Blin. That can model also microscopic roughness. And uh, here, maybe with the projector, maybe it's not so visible, but you can see that the specular reflection here is a bit more easier. So it's not a completely uh, round sphere. It's not a perfect sphere. There are these small imperfections that uh, are characteristic to real world materials. So this is what this model can capture. And there are some other advanced BRDF models some of which are more easy to understand and implement than it is to pronounce the name of the authors of the BRDF models. This is one of those examples. And this is some kind of a multi-layer model where you have a diffuse substrate and you have like a coating, a specular coating. So there are also BRDFs for car paint where you can have these sparkly effects and, and there are many BRDF models that capture given effects. Okay, uh, what if one would like to play with this? The Disney guys have implemented this uh, program called the BRDF Explorer, and you can load many local BRDF models and change the light source positions, look at the actual BRDFs and uh, impulse responses. Give it a try. So we have always been talking about cameras. So we are trying to model real world cameras. If you have a handheld camera, you will see a setting that's called the f-stop. And the f-stop is related to the size of the aperture. The aperture is, is the opening of the camera where the light goes in. And you can set this to different values. And you will notice that if, if you set this f-stop to a high value, then the aperture of the camera is going to become smaller. And if it's smaller, then this means that less light is let in and more of the image that you get is going to be in focus. 
and vice versa. So if you have a low f-stop setting, then you will have a bigger aperture, more light is let in, and more regions will be out of focus. And this is what gives you this depth of field effect, because whatever images we have seen and created with ray tracers yet, don't have this depth of field effect. But if you use a handheld camera, then somehow you have to model this effect as well, because this is how an image would be created on a film. So this is a nice chart uh, made by photographers to see how exactly these f-stops relate to aperture size, what are the typical settings, and all of these interesting things. <clears throat> and an actual example. So let's take a look at the bottom right here. You can see that the whole image is in focus. And as you adjust the f-stop accordingly, you can see the top left. You can see here immediately that the background is heavily blurred. So this is a more pronounced depth of field effect. And it would be wonderful to have a ray tracer that can take this effect into account. And this is another, maybe a bit more beautiful and a bit more visible example. So on the left side, you can see a very pronounced depth of field effect. And on the right, everything, close to everything is in focus. Yes? Um, do you also use the word OK for computer graphics? Yes. OK. Yes. Uh, and there is also a bunch of papers on how to simulate this effect. So people even try to compute this in real time. So you have like a computer game, you would like to see this bouquet effect. How do you do this? And you have to take into consideration the depth. Yeah. Like, like if you know what objects are where exactly, how far away, then you can do a bunch of tricks to, to, to get something like that, an approximation in real time. And if you do this something that I'm going to show you in a second, then you will have the very same effect in your ray tracer. So on the left, completely all in focus image. On the right, you can see again the depth of field effect, especially in the background. The further away you go, the more you see. So how do we do this? Very simple. Let's skip the text. And I just put this here because people who read this at home uh, would know about this. So. Mostly, most of what we do is we shoot a ray through the midpoint of the pixel in our ray tracer. And this is going to touch this focal point and then hit an object. Well, what we could do is that we would also take samples from nearby, so not only this pixel and not only the midpoint, but from nearby, and shoot all of these rays through the same focal point and compute the very same samples, but these samples will be nearby. What we do with these samples is we average them, and this is what is going to give you this depth of field effect. So this is already some kind of integration. This means that which if you run a ray tracer, you're going to get a completely converged image without any noise, without any problems. That, that image you can consider done. But this will not be so with global illumination. This is a speciality of ray tracers. But if you have such an effect, then you may have to wait until more and more of these samples are computed and the more smooth image you will get. But we will talk about this effect extensively. It's going to be very important. And just an important question, what kind of material model can this be? Obviously, this is some quick, perhaps OpenGL preview, but it, it's very apparent what I see. What kind of shading is this? Is it specular? No. These are definitely not mirrors. Okay. What else? Lumber. <coughs> yes, exactly. So this is a Lambertian model. And you can also see this effect that it goes completely black in these grazing angles. 